In fact, if you wanted to make this one look like standard form, what would you have to do to this equation to make it look like standard form? Add to x. Very good. So we just get both variables to one side. If you wanted to make this one look like slope intercept, it's a little bit more complicated because we would have to not only get the x term over here by subtracting 7x, we'd also have to then divide by negative 2. Do you see what I'm talking about there? So we'd have to get the y completely by itself. So that'd be a little bit more work for us uh, to get something from standard form. <coughs> Sometimes it's a little bit more work to get that into slope intercept form. But it is possible we can do that. We'll be practicing that later. Now, what I'd like to do is graph that line. We know it's a straight line because it's a linear equation. It's, it's, a, it's a one of our linear equation forms. But what we're going to do for right now is we're going to graph this just by plotting points. Um, so we're going to make up a table. And the reason why I need you to do this is because when we get to things that are not straight lines, that's how we're going to learn what these shapes are. We're going to plot some points and see if they're straight or see if they're, sometimes we'll get these, sometimes we'll get these weird U-shaped things called parabolas. We'll get some one-sided sideways parabolas. We'll get all sorts of weird things. And so we'll have to kind of find out or discover together what those shapes are by, by just making a t-table. You've all seen t-tables before. They just look like this. They typically have our x-axis points here and our y-axis points here, our x-coordinates here and our y-coordinates here. Now, when you're plotting points, there's seriously a couple things you have to do. One thing you have to do, you really have to find out what's happening at x equals zero. The reason why you want to find that out is you want to know what's happening on the y-axis. Do you see that x equals zero, that is the y-axis for us, right? So we want to figure that out. We also want to know what's happening to the right side of the y-axis and the left side of the y-axis. So not only are we going to use zero, we're going to use a positive number and we're going to use a negative number for our x-axis. That's going to give us a full picture. You see, if we just put in 0, 1, and 2, that'll work for these straight lines because they're not changing. But when we get into more advanced curves uh, later on this semester, if you're not putting in any negatives, you're not going to get the whole picture. You're going to think the graph does something that it doesn't do. Are, am I, are you with me there? So I'm going to get you in the habit now of using both sides of our graph. Now, what do I mean we're going to put in x equals 1 and 0 and negative 1? What's, what's that even mean? Plug it in and solve the problem. Okay, so since x is our what's called independent variable, we can plug things in for x. This is already solved for y. We can get out a y coordinate, and that's going to create a point for us. Notice how this, uh, this form is a little bit easier to do that with than this one. This one would be hard to find y's automatically. It's not solved for y. This one, this one's pretty easy. We're just going to evaluate x equals 1 and 0 and negative 1. That will give us a y value. I'll show you how to do the first one. So we'll do x equals 1. What this means is we're going to take our equation, y equals, the negative 2 stays the same, but the x, that's going to become whatever we're evaluating it for. So in our case, the x is going to become 1. And then we're going to add 3. So notice how the x is just becoming 1 for a second. That's called evaluation. And then we're going to figure out what it is. So how much is our y in this case? Let's do the math carefully. So we're going to have, what's negative 2 times 1? So negative, what's negative 2 plus 3? So our answer is 1. Now, we've got an x coordinate and we have a y coordinate. Does that make a point for us? Sure. x was 1, y was 1. So we can plug this in and or when we know when we plug x in, we get 1, 1, 1 is our point. 0 is a nice one, isn't it? I love the 0 one. It's so easy, it's nice, because it, it takes care of the x, x term for us. So we do the same thing, we get y equals negative 2, only this time x is 0, and then we're adding the 3. Okay, everybody, what are we going to get on this one? Yeah, that's why it's easy, because you know this whole term is eliminated because that x is 0. So y is 3. And again, we get our point. Now, in this case, which number is coming first, the 0 or the 3 in our point? 0. Because that was our x, and then we got out the y, which was 3. I'd like you to do the last one on your own. 
Just do that negative one. You have the idea down, make sure that happens correctly for you. Kind of like, sounds like Captain Kirk. Did you get that? Do you know who Captain Kirk is? Please say yes, I know who Captain yes, Kirk is. Yes. Okay, because that way I don't feel that old. <laughs> so I know who Captain Kirk is. Star Trek, anybody? Yes. That's now on video for you to watch over and over again. Even though. <laughs> So we plug in negative 1, the y is going to be equal to, well, the negative 2, that's not going to change. Our x now becomes negative 1, and then we're going to add 3 to it. So we're just evaluating x for different numbers. Ooh, what happens when you do negative 2 times negative 1? Where are you going to get up to that? And then you're going to add 3, so our, our answer is 5. Tell you what, what if you got a point here, and you graph this thing, and it goes like this? Have you done it right? No. These should be lines. That's why it's called linear. So if you're getting these points that are not in a straight line, you need to check your evaluation because chances are you're making some sort of math error. <coughs> so all these for now should be completely straight lines. If they're not, figure out what's going on with your math. Okay? Use your calculator if you have to for this, by the way. Just plug in the numbers in. That's okay for now. I want you to be able to get the correct points down. So y here is going to equal, like you said, 5, and we're going to get the point negative 1, 5. Bless you. We're ready to graph this thing. Now, the question I have for you is, how many points do you actually need to graph a line? How about one point? Can you graph a, a line with one point? Point, oh, make a line. Because you could put anything through that, right? It would really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But as soon as we have one point and then another, yeah, that makes a straight line. So technically, really all we needed was two points, right? But what if you screw up one of the points? Well, then you're not going to really know if you've got it right or wrong, are you? If we use three points, and it, like I said, if it, it's not a straight line, that way it's, it's kind of a check for you to make sure you have this thing right. So for lines, we're going to be using three points. And now we're ready to graph it. And for us, graphing it simply means you're going to put these points on this graph just like we plotted these points on this graph. So we've only got three of them. We know that one, one, means we're going to go to the right one, and we're going to go up one. And that's our point right there. Zero, three means we're not going to go over left or right at all, because our x coordinate zero is zero, so you're not moving. And then positive three means we are going to go up three, so our point's right there. The last point says we are going to go to the left one unit from the origin, and then up five units. On the y axis. So over to the left and up five at the same time. Does it look like we did it right? Are those points in relatively a straight line? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, right there that tells you, okay, I have this problem correct. What we're going to do is connect these. I'm not very good at connecting the dots, just so you know, so my lines look like squiggly sometimes, but I'll try. Oh, that's better than normal. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> we just make the dots bigger. See? We get a straight line. That's why it's, it's called linear. We, we're making straight lines out of this thing. How many will have a graph something like this on their paper feel okay about doing something like this? Okay. There's a couple things that I need to tell you about this graph uh, before we move any further. The first thing is, do you notice that it does, in fact, cross the y-axis? Where it crosses the y-axis, what we call that is the y-intercept. That's why we plug in the 0 for x. That plugging in 0 for x here is always going to give us the y-intercept. Do, do you see what I'm talking about? If you plug in this point on the x-coordinate, it will give you where your graph crosses the y-axis, and that's an important point for us a lot of the times. So, I'll write that down for you. Where the graph crosses the y-axis, that's called the y-intercept. And we find it by plugging in x equals zero. Jacob, it's fine. 
So where the graph crosses the y-axis, what we have there is called the y-intercept. But then we also see the graph crosses the x-axis too. So we have oftentimes a y-intercept and an x-intercept. So here our y-intercept, what's our y-intercept in our case? Can you see it? Yeah, 0, 3 is our y-intercept. Our x-intercept looks like it's a fraction, maybe 1 and a half, comma 0. So we have both an x-intercept and a y-intercept in this case. So where the graph crosses the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept. And where it crosses the x-axis, of course, it's going to be called our x-intercept. Now, fortunately for us, this process of plugging in 0 for x gives us the y-intercept every single time. So if ever you want to find the y-intercept, which I said is very important for us, we're just going to plug in 0 for x, or we're going to set x equal to 0. So to find the y-intercept, Set x equal to 0. This works, again, I, I've said this a couple times now, but this works because the y-intercept will always happen at the coordinate of x equals 0. That's where that thing happens every time. So we plug in x equals 0, that gives us our y-intercept. The opposite is true for our x-intercept. So to find x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. This involves a little bit more work because you have to solve for x, but it's not too bad. So to find the x-intercept, set y equals 0. I'll just talk about this process. I won't actually go through it. But if you wanted to find the x-intercept right now, what you do is you go back to this equation. Instead of putting 0 here, you put 0 here. Notice how you'd have nothing here, a 0, and you'd be left with the x. That tells you you're going to be finding the x-intercept. Do you get it? Whatever variable you're left with is the intercept that you are finding. I'll say that one more time, it's kind of important. Whatever variable you are left with is the intercept that you are finding. So if you're left with the x variable, you're finding the x intercept. If you're left with the y variable, like when we plug in 0, you're finding the y intercept. Do you guys kind of get that? It's kind of nice. So we put 0 in here and we solve for x. Subtract 3, divide by negative 2, you get positive 3 halves, or as we see here, 1 and a half. That's the way we define our x intercept. One more thing I want to talk about before we move any further. Would you say this graph is falling or rising as you're going from left to right? Is it falling? Let's, let's see, falling. Falling or rising? What do you falling. think? Falling. Yeah. That's always going to happen if you look at your x term. That's this term. That's always going to happen if your x term has a negative in front of it. It's going to be going down from left to right. If this was a positive, this would be going up from left to right. Are you with me on that? Let's try one more. I want to show you something that we can do with some fractions, and then we'll move on. 